you know, the universe just slides you great people when I think, you know, you're on some kind of frequency wanting to make this place, make this life, make this world just more tender, more awake, more alive. And so Michael somehow was slid to me by the universe and I am very thankful for that. But, you know, we did this incredible thing at dinners. We would read poetry with my, my mom and dad, my brother. Wow. And that's what we would do. I mean, my, my parents are avid, avid artistic types of people. Um, they're humanitarians, I would say. They're very interested in the arts. They're art collectors. And they're, they're poets in their own right. You know, the way they go through life, I think. And I've never told them that, but I will. Mm. So we would sit around the table and read poetry and kind of dissect poetry, which looking back on that now is amazing. And I can't wait to do that with Shalom. And I can also remember as a 14, 15 year old being like, oh God, I just did this all day in school. <laughs> that is part of the, the finding yourself and experimentation and identification in adolescence. You know, you're finding out who you are. Mm -hmm. So of course people go through that type of journey. And I think, you know, I, if, if we go back to what I said, 10 minutes ago, which is, I ended up thinking I was dumb. And so I painted that picture of me in this corner. You know, I took experimentation with drugs to an extreme because I, there was a part of me that I just didn't like. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. that was a way for me to further not like myself. When yeah, it was a terrible time. It's not something that you, you don't go into a relationship thinking that you'll be harmed. Mm. You know, and it was my first relationship uh, with a woman. And so I think there was also that much more weight on it, that much more expansiveness on it, that much more everything. You know, it's kind of like I, I found something I, I really wanted to ex experience, maybe experiment with and experience. Would I take away the pain that I felt? Yeah, sure. I don't, I didn't need we need to feel all of that pain. Mm. However, mm. I wouldn't be sitting here had I not gone there. Mm. And I, I actually wouldn't be me. I don't, I think I would be a more selfish version of me. I think I would be mm. a more, I don't, I would not be, well, I just wouldn't have the same heart, I don't think, to do because I think it's something that we all have access to every single one of us, and I'm not a neuroscientist, so I don't know how the brain works, but I do believe that every single one of us has two things. One, a pilot light inside of us. So our own internal flame, mm -hmm. our own internal flame that only we can ignite or dim. Only we can do that. Kind of almost like restart, reboot in many ways. I was 39 going on 40 and moved to London without knowing anyone, without knowing anyone at, at the agency and, hmm. you know, really had just the most incredible time. It was really empowering. It was a great way to get to know myself in a different way. It was very quiet. I would ride the double-decker buses, and sit up in the front and just listen to my headphones on and on and on <laughs> and then i you know met some great people off some great friends out there and it was absolutely meant to be it was really meant to be and i never would have known until that minute that i met him at the coffee shop in new york that it was meant to be until i actually could feel the vibe it's one thing on the phone and anyone would fall in love with him you know he's so charismatic and he's just he's so smart but that minute, it was just very chill. And it was as though I was talking to my brother and that's really how I think about it. I mean, he's my boss, mm. but he's also my brother and my friend and my mentor and wow, it's awesome. Mm. But the fact that we are obsessed with how we treat human beings is what is mm. going to make us win. Because if you come from that place, and think about the creativity that can spring forward that way. You know, you're not worried about your job. You're not worried about your job. What you want to do is you want to have the flexibility and the runway to create the most, you know, excellent, gorgeous, elegant, funny, whatever it is, 
piece of art, if you will, video, that is going to touch lives. You know, yeah. Someone hasn't seen their parents in three years because they live in Thailand, or someone's father is ill, or someone just got engaged this past weekend. I mean, they're going to come, mm. you know, you got you to, gotta, like, if we go back to what we've been talking about in this entire podcast, which is the ability to feel, the ability to courageously step out and be able to be there for other people. Like that's what it's about. It is acknowledging that, oh shit, if, shit, if this happens to me, imagine what it happens to 800 people. Mm. You know, if I'm a human being and I, I go through some of the trials and tribulations and celebrations and joys, like, oh, well, I guess that's happening for everyone else. Yeah. Why don't I open myself to that?